Hello there, I'm Brian. I am Finlog's imaginary identical twin brother. He told me that if I behave myself, he'd let me record a video and put it on his channel. Unlike him, I'm a creationist. I believe that God created the whole universe in six 24-hour days. He chilled out on the seventh day because he was knackered. This was either a Saturday or a Sunday. Only God knows for sure. He told Moses to keep this day holy, pretty much forever. The reason I believe these things is that I have faith that everything in the Bible is literally true, exactly as it was written down. Even if some of these things seem to contradict, the thing is that I accept that God is the ultimate authority, and that if the book he co-authored, inspired, or whatever, says this, then it is so. What do humans know, anyway? We're all vastly inferior to him, and he rightfully demands our supplication, our absolute obedience, and, of course, our worship. What self-respecting deity wouldn't? Mind you, according to the Bible, he is the one true God. Which, like I said, means that that is true, along with everything else in the Bible. I believe it very strongly, because that's what it says in the book itself. Not only that, but I feel it in my heart. At least, I get a warm, fuzzy feeling when I think about how great God is. In the book of Isaiah, it was prophesied that a virgin would conceive, and that there would be a voice crying in the wilderness, which, as if by magic, actually happened several centuries later. And the New Testament tells us about John the Baptist, and his unusual but no doubt delicious and nourishing diet, as well as a young virgin girl called Mary, who was impregnated by God himself in his Holy Spirit manifestation. And nine months later, the baby Jesus popped out in a manger and a house, and he became the third part of the Holy Trilogy. What a wonderful story. The reason I know, or at least believe, that all of this really happened is that I have been guided by the Holy Spirit myself. You know, that warm, fuzzy feeling I was telling you about. And this feeling, or intuition, has told me that such stories could not possibly have come from mere human mind. They're far too imaginative and profound. We don't know that much about Jesus' early life, but when he was a proper adult, he bumped into John the Baptist, who was standing in a river, digesting locusts and wild honey. Somehow he knew who Jesus was, and agreed to baptise him, even though he thought he wasn't worthy. But he did it anyway, and lo and behold, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit, this time in his dove manifestation, flew down and magically turned Jesus into an even more superhuman than he already was. From then on, people knew him as Jesus Christ. He was almost as super as Yahweh now, the one true super-god. So now the trilogy was complete, very holy and definitely deserving of eternal worship. George Lucas had nothing on him, them, him, them. Sometimes heathens argue with me and try to tell me I'm wrong about the age of the universe and the origins of life. Their stories do sound plausible, but my faith and my confidence in God's awesomeness tells me that he created all of those billions of stars and galaxies as a light source so we could see our way around in the dark if we needed to go anywhere when the moon isn't shining, which, by the way, only looks like it reflects sunlight. Did I mention how awesome God is already? You know he created the heavens and the earth just as they are now. And when astrophysicists say that the finite speed of light means that there hasn't been enough time for the light from stars over 6,000 light years away to reach us yet, what they don't realise is that God created them that way. It's a bit like starting a movie, part way through. God can do these things. If he wants to make it seem like the universe is 13.7 billion years old, he can do that. He's God. He can do anything he likes. He even created the cosmic microwave background radiation, just the way it is. How awesome is that? There are some people who believe that the old universe hypothesis, <laughs> who claim to be Christians, but they can't be true believers like me. 
They obviously haven't been blessed with the Holy Spirit like I have. They'll end up in the lake of fire with all the other heathen sinners. Poor deluded fools. Mind you, they do deserve it. Not only is God infinitely good, infinitely wise and infinitely loving, kind and merciful, he's also infinitely jealous and infinitely just. I hope you unbelievers are beginning to understand why I worship him and why you should do the same. Must go now. May God have mercy on you all. Heathen.